Hello everyone, welcome to episode 2 of season 2.5.2 .2 of Dragon Ball Twaria. We're going to pick up where we left off last time, which is where I did my King Slime Revengeance mode rematch. So after depositing all of my junk into my chest, I was kind of in the mood to keep facing bosses, so I kind of looked to see what the next boss I could fight was, which is Torch God. I decided to kind of skip this one because, I'll be honest, I've never actually fought Torch God before, and I didn't really see any good drops that he could give. So I figured I'd set my eyes on the Desert Scourge, but this of course required me to go back and explore the desert. I of course decided to take the temple down into the underground desert, as I just kind of noticed that there isn't actually a big hole or anywhere where I can actually access the underground desert, so I don't know what happened there. But anyways, I found a sandstone house, so that was pretty cool. Unfortunately, it didn't really give anything too um, interesting, but I guess it's better than nothing. But of course, the main reason why I was even down here in the first place is to look for storm line mandibles and just kind of regular ant line mandibles. Um, I didn't have either of those, and I needed both of those in order to kind of make the Desert Medallion, which I needed to kind of spawn in the Desert Scourge. So I basically had to kill pretty much every ant lion I came across. Anyways, I'm not really going to bore you with kind of the mining I did, so I'll just kind of show highlights of what I found. I found four life crystals in surprisingly close range to each other. I also found the golfer, but I mean, I never really buy anything from him, so... I also found another sandstone house, and unfortunately didn't have anything inside that I really wanted. I noticed that my inventory was getting a little bit full, so I decided to recall back to base just to kind of clear my inventory a little bit. After teleporting back up to the surface, I ran over to the underground crimson in order to craft myself a desert medallion. Now once I finished making the desert medallion, I started building more houses back at base. I'm not actually sure why I actually did this looking back at the footage. My guess is I probably just felt bad for leaving the golfer out in the, mid the middle of the desert, so I figured I might as well get him in here. I ended up building a second story. Now that I think about it, I probably built more housing just to kind of get the uh, arms dealer to move in. Because I did want to use the farmer shotgun, even though I feel like it's worse than the power pole. But I mean, I guess it could be used for kind of um, long range combat, which would be helpful for Eye of Cthulhu. The nurse is also a pretty good NPC to have moved in as well. After I finished the housing, the nurse moved in, and it was morning time. So I figured it would probably be a good time to kind of start building my Desert Scourge Arena. I decided to do it over the Oasis biome for just no reason in particular. Although I probably build it over the oasis to take advantage of the elusive and secret water Vegeta form. So I finished building the arena, and while I was building it, the arm still moved in, so I was able to buy some bullets, which would be pretty helpful against Desert Scourge, although I never actually used the shotgun.
GG easy. I'm going to be honest, I actually don't remember what any of the pop-ups in the bottom left actually mean. I think... I think it means the sunken sea is spawned, right? So what the pop-up meant of the depths of the underground desert rumbling meant is that some stuff is happening in the sunken sea, which is a biome that spawned under the desert. We actually won't be going there this playthrough just because it doesn't have anything worth of value in there for the time being. Uh, there is a giant clam, but that's more of a mini boss, so don't really plan on facing it. So after being the Desert Scourge fairly easily, I felt pretty confident in my ability to take down Aya Cthulhu, so I just kind of looked at his crafting recipe really quick just to remind myself of what I needed. I just wanted to collect all the things I can before nightfall, so I could face Aya Cthulhu hopefully that night. The only issue is that somehow I had basically no lenses at all, so I need to go out at night just to go kill some demon eyes to hopefully get enough lenses by that night um, to be able to face Ai Cthulhu. Uh, when I kind of saw this, I was pretty feeling a little bit unhopeful that I wasn't going to be able to face Ai Cthulhu at that night, just because I probably just wouldn't have enough time. But I somehow got pretty lucky when it came to my lens drops, and I actually completely forgot that you actually don't make the suspicious eye from a demon altar, you actually make it from a workbench. Although it was a good thing that I did come down here to the Crimson because there was a diamond tree if you kind of saw there. So I definitely did want to grab that as diamonds are going to be pretty helpful when it comes to setting up magic storage. Which I'll explain what it is a little bit later on once we actually make it. But to sum it up, it basically declutters and manages your uh, inventory and item management for you. You can have crafting interfaces as well so you don't really need to clutter up your kind of living spaces. With just various crafting stations and whatnot you can just have it all in one place in like one sort of hub after cutting down the gemstone tree i teleported back to base to make myself a gemstone eye as well as a storage chart to set up magic storage as i was going to officially be able to set it up after i beat Ai cthulhu You know, this Revengeance mode is, um, seeming a bit too easy. What's the next step up? Death. Regardless of ease, we've actually finally obtained one of the first forms in Dragon Ball. I guess technique, I should call it. Kaioken. So similar to how Kaioken works in the anime, in Terraria, it continuously drains your life when you have it active. So you want to mainly use it in short bursts. Oh, I have the trait of Prodigy. Master Mastery Games, it's cool. So me having the Prodigy trait is actually kind of significant here, as this will make obtaining later Super Saiyan forms just a little bit less painful. Um, the way you obtain them now is a bit annoying, but I'll kind of explain why that is once we actually unlock Super Saiyan and of course subsequent forms. Oh, this is new. Fruit of Might. Increase max HP by 50, increase max key by 500, unlocks evil form if you have Ancient Trait. Well, it's material. Enchanted Dragon Ball can be worn in vanity slots. Power, 
powers you up, increasing key damage, increase maximum key by 250, increase maximum HP by 250. And okay then. This doesn't seem all that good, I'm gonna be honest. The fruit of might seems much better. While increasing max HP by 50 early game is pretty OP, I'll take it anyways. Now the main thing I needed from my Cthulhu was a Shadow Diamond. Uh, shadow Diamonds are used in crafting recipes that I can use to set up magic storage. So I kind of teased magic storage just a little bit earlier, but basically what magic storage does is it basically removes the need for you to organize your chest as it combines all your chests or items I should say into kind of one spot. This is pretty handy for me because I usually don't organize my chests at all in kind of vanilla terraria. I just kind of just press deposit all and then I just hope that I can find the items I need. But basically how magic storage is set up is that there is a storage heart which is the green box you can see and then right on top of it you have the uh, blue crafting interface. The storage heart connects to storage units and the storage units hold all of your items. Now the thing about storage units is that they automatically sort all of your items and you can uh, have select filters to be able to make finding your items a little bit easier. So this is basically what the magic storage system looks like once it's all set up. Um, you can deposit all your items using the green storage chart and then you can craft all your items in the kind of blue storage interface which is what I'm doing right here. It's pretty handy and convenient and every time I have a modded playthrough I always make sure to have this mod enabled. I just because I kind of hate sorting through chests and inventory and all that. Anyways, after logging off and taking a little bit of a break, I merely beeline to the dungeon as if it was probably time I learned how to fly. The reason why I need to head to the dungeon is because I need to make an item called the Bakujutsu Guide? Bakatsu Guide? I have no idea how to pronounce that word. Anyways, I need to craft that item and in order to craft it, I need to get a book. Now of course grabbing the books for the dungeon was no issue um, at all, so after I grabbed those I decided to teleport back home to craft the guide. So after making the guide and using it, I looked into my settings just to make sure that I had the key bound, and I also started charging my key once I made sure it was bound to act like I was actually going to use it and show it off. But even once I fully charged my key, I just ended up expanding my housing because I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do next in the mod. The reason why I didn't really know what to do is, while Krabulon technically is next in the boss progression, fighting and beating him won't really kind of improve my circumstances at all, as the next tier of kind of key weapons in the mod pack is locked behind Brain of Cthulhu. While I was building and expanding my housing, I decided to kind of go over the two options I had, which was I could just skip Krabulon right now and then return to my later date and just go and fight Brain of Cthulhu right now, or I could go to find an underground glowing mushroom biome, set up and and then fight Carbulon, then fight Brain of Cthulhu. Now while I was expanding my housing, I did see that the Acid Rain event did start, so I decided to kind of take a bit of a pause on the house expansion project and decided to go and go to the Radiate Seed to go do that event. Also, here's me showcasing off uh, flying. As you can see, it drains your key really, really quickly. So, you, early game, you're not really going to be able to use it all that much. It's mainly just going to be used just to kind of maybe evade attacks or just what I'm doing here with kind of traveling. But even with traveling, uh, it's not like you can travel very far right now. Now, I was mainly just going to do this event just for fun. But while it's doing the event, I did note that there was a drop called the Soul of Death which was actually a crafting recipe that was exclusive to one of the kind of Dragon Ball Terraria Calamity add-on mods. So that was pretty interesting. Although I will kind of spoil it right now, I can't actually utilize the Soul of Deaths until a long time. As, as I saw, they were only used in two crafting recipes and both of those were like way deep into hard mode. Now after I finished the event, I killed a just a straight Thresher which dropped the Angler. I can't wait to never do any of his quests. When I teleported back home, I saw that the traveling merchant has graced me with his present, so I decided to see what it was selling, and to my surprise, he was actually selling some decent stuff, mainly being the life form analyzer and the arm cannon. The arm cannon has some okay stats for early game, nothing to really write home about, but I mean, I guess it's better than nothing. Although at this point in the game, we're still not really using key attacks a whole lot, just because we don't have a lot of key to work with. 
Anyways, believe it or not, at this point I was still unsure of what to do, so I decided to consult the Getting Started section of the Dragon Ball Terry Wiki just to kind of see what things I could make at this point. One thing that caught my eye was the Novice Key Fragment and of course the Novice Key Scroll. I could look at them because they did seem familiar from one of my previous playthroughs, but I couldn't really remember why that was. Now the reason why I jogged my memory just a little bit is because Novice Key Fragment is used to increase your max key by 1000, which is pretty powerful for the early game. That means you of course can fly longer and stay in your transformations longer. I guess you can also use your key weapons for longer without having to kind of recharge, but you're just better off just using your power pole or the farmer shotgun if you have one. The thing is, is that the key fragment is dropped by Ai Cthulhu, has a fairly high drop chance, I think it's like 25%, so I'm not really too worried about it, it's just that I'm just going to have to fight Ai Cthulhu again. Now while I was waiting for nighttime to roll around, I decided to expand my arena because this was something I was definitely going to have to do later on, so I might as well get out of the way now. I think it's sufficiently tall enough, I think at this point I just want to make the arena just a little bit longer. Anyways, I figured that the arena lengthening project will be something I do kind of later on, so I decided to summon Aya Cthulhu, hopefully I was going to get the drop on my first attempt as I didn't really want to keep fighting him over and over and over again. Uh, attempt 2 was just about as smooth as Attempt 1. I think it actually took a little bit longer this time, but oh well. Anyways, uh, finishing up Attempt 2, here comes the moment of truth. Did I Cthulhu drop it? Thankfully he did, first try, so now to fight him over and over again. He also dropped another one of those Fruit of My things. I didn't really want to see if it's stacked. I was thinking about trashing it, but I did see that it was a material, and I probably wanted another one handy just in case. Although if you could consume multiple, that would be kind of broken. Anyways, next on my list, I decided to go after Brandon Cthulhu, uh, just because I didn't really want to go through the effort of finding a glowing mushroom biome. Even though I am going to have to do that eventually, I figured that I'll probably just leave it for a later version of me that actually has faster mining tools, so I don't have to like, kind of painstakingly keep digging down and down just to kind of find a cavern. Now, I was feeling pretty confident in my ability to kind of take down Brandon Cthulhu at this point, uh, even though I did feel a little bit weak at this point, Brenda Cthulhu isn't really that difficult in my opinion. Uh, Eater of Worlds is definitely much harder than him. Um, but I figured, you know, this census is Revengeance Mode. I've never done Revengeance Calamity before. Uh, who knows? Uh, Revengeance Mode does seem to like to throw in curveballs, so... Uh, Brenda Cthulhu could secretly be really difficult. Who knows? Anyways, I teleported home to make a bloody spine just the way I didn't have to keep... Uh, destroying hearts just in case you need to make multiple attempts uh, against Brandy Cthulhu. I'm gonna be honest, I don't remember any of the Aya Cthulhu eyes having this much damage resistance. Also, this is kind of broken. I'm guessing this is Revengeance Mode exclusive. That's one way to spice up the fight.
Oh, wait, hold on. I did not mean to accidentally unlock Super Saiyan. I think that's what I did there. Um, cool, I guess. It's getting really hard to tell which one's which. Okay. So that was hectic towards the end there. Um, so let me check my transformations. It didn't lock Super Saiyan, it locked false Super Saiyan, so that's pretty cool. Um, Because, yeah, I got confused there, because I do know that I think you need to beat Skeletron before you can actually unlock Super Saiyan, so... Uh, I, got, I got a bit worried there that I... um. Not Super Saiyan. But it's just false Super Saiyan, although... I, mean, I guess it's still technically Super Saiyan form. Alright then. Time to see what it's all about. Number first. There we go. False SSJ buff plus 35% damage, 1 plus plus 35% speed plus two defense, and plus 30 key cost. That drains really quickly. But I must say, I do think it's weird that False Super Saiyan is given a golden hair when False Super Saiyan doesn't have gold hair. Anyways, that's all I have for episode 2. Um, we actually accomplished quite a lot in this episode. We ended up beating Desert Scourge, I Cthulhu, and Brain of Cthulhu. So, three bosses in one episode. I don't think episode three will have as many, as episode three will mainly focus around me kind of exploring the jungle, as the, the jungle enemies will now start spawning in Calm Key Crystals. Calm Key Crystals are used to make the next tier of weapons and armor, so that should be kind of fun, although I'm not really looking forward to exploring the underground jungle. Anyways, uh, be sure to join me for episode 3. Hopefully it'll be as action-packed as this one.